Good morning. I'm trying very hard to smile here, but it's uh, minus two, minus three degrees this morning. We had a storm come through Friday. High winds over 40 miles an hour. Sunday morning, it's clear. The sun's coming up. It's going to warm up. There's no wind. However, we're on all 18 mats now. I'm starting from the from the ninth. The winter league's going off the first, so unless I want a tea time sometime after midday, I got to come off the back nine. It is freezing. It's absolutely bloody freezing. We're going to be on temporary green, so I ain't interested in the score today. I don't know how I'm going to hit the golf ball. I got me little heat pads to try and keep my hands warm. This is what we do in England in winter. Oh, crikey. Well, the mats are frozen. I can barely get the tea peg into it. My hands are frozen. I warmed up in the net, warmed up being a relative term. The mat in the net was frozen. I knifed one. My fingers just went completely numb straight away. <laughs> yeah, we're not counting the score today, not with temporary greens, but this is gonna be a bit of a laugh, but the sun is starting to get above the horizon, so it is gonna warm up, especially with no wind. Look at that, the sun's uh, come up above the trees now and it is really warming up. Relative term, obviously. I got the two heat pads, trying to keep my fingers warm. Now, a few years ago, somebody asked me, why Thailand? Why on earth do I go to Thailand? And to cut a long story short, I since a kid I've been fascinated with the Far East. Japan in particular, the culture, the, 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 the sort of sadomasochism of their culture, the way they love inflicting pain on people, and, and other bizarre things like um, the motorcycle gangs that ride around Tokyo and they obey the speed limit and they obey the traffic lights and it just seems to be the exact opposite of of what you would expect. So I've always been fascinated with the Far East. Now in 1990 I had a chance to go to Malaysia. I was going to go to the island of Pen Penang for a holiday and I didn't go. The 12 hour flight kind of put me off and uh, I regretted it ever since. That was the only time I think I had where I had a bit of money where I could actually go and do something. It was just before I moved house and I had a bit of, bit of money set aside and I could have had that holiday and I just didn't have it. Strange thing is, is if I had gone, I think it would have changed my life entirely to have gone to the Far East at age 25. Hell, I, I might even be, be married to a lady from the Far East. Who knows? So, um, I didn't go. Now, while my wife and I were having kids, we couldn't afford for me to go and do anything golf-wise anywhere. So while all my mates at the golf club were having their long weekends in Portugal, which seemed to be drinking weekends as opposed to golfing weekends, that didn't really appeal to me, you know, going out there and drinking and sharing a room and me going to bed at half past ten because I want to play decent golf the following day and then someone coming in the room at 3am and pissing in my suitcase because he's so drunk. So I never fancied the standard long weekend in Spain or Portugal with the lads because I don't fit in. You know, I'm not a drinker. I'm somebody who wants to play golf and then go and explore. I want to see the, the part of the world that I'm actually visiting. I don't want to see the bar, the golf course, the bar, the golf course. And to be honest, I don't get a huge amount of enjoyment of getting drunk and throwing up either. So, so I've just let a two ball through 
they came onto the tee behind me and I, I said, I've teed off, why don't you go through, because I'm going to be walking and talking and standing still a lot today. For some strange reason, they're going down the 8th instead of the 9th. Anyway, so uh, we'll play a bit of golf, we'll do a little bit of walking, and we'll do a bit of talking, and I will talk to you a little bit more about how I ended up in Thailand. Tell you what, that's not bad. Right, I'm going to risk getting my hand frozen as we uh, walk down here. That's the thing about a metal tripod. It very quickly descends to the, uh, the ambient air temperature. Right, so my dad died when I was 39 and uh, one of his mates, a guy that I've known since I was a kid in short trousers, kind of like took me under his wing a little bit for a couple of years actually because because I really needed it very very kind bloke good golfer I think he was a two handicap in his prime here's my ball I'm about about 10 paces from the hole I'm not going to bother chipping and putting this not interested in kind of like making a score today Tell you what, this camera does not get any lighter. So for a couple of years I had this gentleman. It really isn't getting any lighter, is it? Let me put you down. So this guy took me under his wing for a couple of years, which uh, I'm eternally grateful for after my dad died and um, we played a bit of golf together, that sort of thing. Now he goes to Thailand every year. I didn't know that. I, I mean, I don't know anything about Thailand. And he was urging me to go. You know, you've got to live these things. Because since my dad retired, I always had this kind of like, you know, I said to him, now you're retired, you've got to go and do all the things that you wanted to do. And they never did. Mum and Dad never did go and do all the things that they wanted to do. They always managed to find an excuse not to go and do something. You know, they were going to go to New Zealand to see my Mum's cousin and they never got round to it. And of course, they never did get round to it because my Dad died young. Stomach cancer, then bowel cancer. And um, so this guy was urging me to go and do the things that I wanted to do, that I'd never done mostly because I was raising a family and I had no money. But I got to a stage in my life where I did have a little money. And I remembered something that my dad said to me uh, about three days before he died. And he said to me, he said, you're right, Simon, if there's something that you want to do, then you should go and do it. So I did. Yeah, I got proper metal spikes on and I'm still afraid of slipping. It's out there. It'll do for a Sunday morning when it's this cold. I wonder if you could hear that land on the frozen ground from here. It's a few feet away. Nice shot. God, it's impossible doing this. There we go, dropped it there. Got the bucket hole. Can't be bothered to put it.
yeah it's frozen solid and with the bucket hole you can't miss so this is why I just don't bother trying to make a score on temporary greens nice three though Uh, I can't see shit. <laughs> oh dear. It's pointless trying really, isn't it? Right, so I've wandered up to uh, 13 now. The rest of the course is closed because of snow. Um, you can see it on the hills, but it's, it's out there in the fairway. It's on the 14th fairway. We might have a little wander around so I can show you that. But, uh, so getting back to the story. So my dad's mate who took me under his wing for a couple of years, he, um, he told me where to go, where to play, where to stay, what it was like. So, uh, you know, I'm a planner for a living, so I, you know, I do my research. So I had a really good look around the internet for a few months, actually, trying to work out what to do and where to go. And then I put the proposal to my wife. Now, we have a little rule in our house. My pay belongs to the house, but my overtime belongs to me. So if I want to do something extra of and above the normal sort of run-of-the-mill stuff then I got to do the overtime and that overtime pays for me to do what I want so if I want a new set of irons I do the overtime if I want new woods I do the overtime now I was in a position where I could have a golf holiday and it was relatively cheap that was the great thing about it the exchange rate at that time with Thailand was was so good that it was as cheap as chips so I put the proposal to her. She only had one concern, and that one concern would be that I would be on my own. And if you've got Spurgers, that isn't a concern. The Spurgers people spend a lot of time on their own. See what I mean? So um, I contacted this golf company in Thailand, felt out the land, got it booked, got it paid for. Now I got put with three Australians who were there with their wives so Billy no mates here had no problem because I was with three brilliant Australian guys we had a ball for two weeks I say they were with their wives so there was it was it was a social our evenings were social as opposed to necking it which suited me right down to the ground and because they'd been before they were able to show me bits and pieces which I hadn't considered. I got out and I saw parts of the countryside. So that first trip I only played six rounds of golf in two weeks so there was loads of other things to do and to discover and it was brilliant and I keep going back to the same place. Another thing about uh, Asperger's and getting older is you become a creature of habit so you end up going back to the same place. You've got the same hotel room, you've got the same room cleaner, you've got the same people on the desk, you've got the same guy driving the minibus who drove the minibus last year. So familiarity is very good for me. But now I'm spreading my wings, I'm going to start going to different places. But um, there's three things. There's always three things in an equation like a golf holiday like this. That is want, need and affordability so I need a holiday I want a golf holiday in the Far East I'd love to go to Japan or Taiwan or the golf courses near the Great Wall of China but that's where affordability comes in 
So, the reason why I keep going back to the same place is because I can afford it. Thailand is affordable. Singapore is not affordable. Taiwan is not affordable. South Korea is not affordable. China isn't affordable. Indonesia, well, the weather's too shit. It's, it's, it's too humid all the time. Plus, you've got earthquakes and volcanoes to mess around with. And, um, you know, China's unaffordable. Plus, there is the limit to what my body will allow me to do on an aircraft. You know, 12 hours in economy was not fun. I'll, I'll tell you that for free. It was not fun. Now, the second time I went, coming back in economy, I got a middle seat. I got a middle seat between two very large, tattooed, bald, drunk guys who passed out the instant they sat down and they were like that. Now, it was, there was a strong wind coming home, so coming home it was 13 and a half hours. So I had a 13 and a half hours in economy like this. I had to eat like this. I couldn't get out for a pee. I asked if there was other seats that I could go to and there just wasn't. The flight was full. So I had 13 and a half hours like this between two fat, big, ugly, passed out blokes they didn't wake up the entire flight, they, they were that drunk. They weren't angry drunk, fighting drunk, they were passed out drunk. So, I couldn't get go for a pee, I couldn't do anything. So after that second trip, I said, I'm only ever going to go back if I can go in business class, which I now do. Of course, business class requires more overtime. I, I do about 25 Saturdays over a two year period, so I go once every two years and that pays for the seating. So this time around, now that I've finally booked it, yeah, I've booked the flights, I'm actually going on Singapore Airlines via Singapore, so it's a longer flight, but I'm going in biz. Now some airlines at the moment are, are saying, well, there's not much demand, countries might close their doors again, so we're gonna put on a limited service of one flight a week, and we will charge through the roof for it. Other airlines are going, hey, they've only put it on one flight a week. Let's put on a full schedule, we'll put it at a reasonable price and we'll attract all the business. And guess what? They're attracting all the business. So the other airlines who are putting on one flight a week are going, we haven't got any customers. Well, sort yourself out. Bring the price down, put on a schedule. Should I play this anyway? I mean, it's closed and there's snow out there, but should we have a laugh? Any advice on this shot? Yeah, I think that one turned into a snowball. It's about that diameter now. <laughs> So why do I like going to Thailand in November, normally? Well, it's a bit warmer than here, for starters. Quite a bit warmer. There's no shared room, and I don't have to pay a single supplement. Now, if you're American, you might not understand what a single supplement is. But if you go to Spain, they're twin rooms. But if you want a room to yourself, because you don't want someone coming in at 3 a.m. and pissing in your suitcase because they're drunk, then they charge you a supplement for being the only person in the room. Typically about 450, 500 pounds a week. Yeah. Now, because the flight to Thailand is international, all your luggage is free. If you go to Spain or Portugal, you've got to pay for your luggage. You've got to pay for your golf clubs. You've got to pay for food. You've got to pay for drink. You know, these cheap flights, once you add everything on, including your seat reservation and everything else, they're not actually that cheap. When you add on the single supplement, 
to have, say, a couple of weeks holiday in Spain or Portugal, because I like to go for a holiday, not a weekend, then that, that really hammers it. That really bangs the price up. The cost of golf out there is, isn't that cheap, Spain and Portugal. The golf buggies, they typically charge 30, or even 40 euros for a, for a golf cart. You know, in America, you pay $30 for a round of golf and that includes the cart. In Thailand, the cart is, is 10 quid. All right, you've got to have a caddy. But I enjoy having a caddy. I enjoy having someone to talk to. I enjoy somebody helping my game and helping me score. You know, if you go out in the evening for a drink or a meal and a drink, if, if eight of you walk into a bar and you all order a drink, you get your own check bin. So if that guy over there is drinking four pints an hour and you're drinking one pint in an hour and a half, you're not in the same round as him. You're in your own personal round. Yeah, just checking, no one else is coming up here. This is why I'm here. It's because it's empty and I can have a chat. So, the, the food is cheap, the drink is cheap. You know, if you, there's a drink stop on the golf course every four holes and you have to keep pouring the liquid in because you're sweating so much. But a bottle of water here, half a litre bottle of water here that costs a pound in the clubhouse, out there it's about 25p. You know, it's a quarter of the price. And of course there's the culture and there's the elephants and you know the elephants are so intelligent. I'm pretty sure they're more intelligent than uh, half the blokes I work with. Easily half the blokes I work with. <laughs> yeah sorry guys but you deserve it. So that's what I like to see. We live underneath the uh, flight path from London to New York and the sky's been empty so much over the last couple of years. So it's nice to see vapor trails going over. Finally, at last, we're heading towards no normality. Now, we've, they've just announced this new variant in South Africa a couple of days ago. Of course, everyone's panicking about that. The, the media have got to generate the panic amongst the population. It's clickbait, it's bollocks, it's crap. Yeah, that's a big one too. Not sure there's many 747s left. They scrapped quite quite a few of them. Anyway. Yeah, so there's there's new variant about. I'm not worried. I've still got 400 rolls of toilet paper from the last time, so I should be all right. So, March. Three weeks in Thailand. Two weeks in my normal spot. One week at a golf resort in the middle of nowhere. Nearest town's about 35 miles away, so it's going to be nice and quiet. I must be the only nutter out here. I'm going to go down to the clubhouse and get a drink, get something to eat. And on Wednesday, I got a hospital appointment first thing in the morning. So I'm going to be out here in the afternoon playing 18 holes. I've got the day off work. Hopefully this stuff will be gone. I don't mind the mats, but I don't want to be on the temporary greens. So the next video is about the mats and hopefully it's, it's cold enough that I, I can actually swing a golf club. Don't know what my driver swing speed is today, probably about 80 miles an hour. Anyway, cheerio. Um, when I get to Thailand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as well as the golf videos, I'm going to do videos on the days that I'm not playing golf. And I'm going to put it out as kind of like a holiday package. So you can see some of the things I get up to on the days when I'm not playing golf. Could be fun. I mean, you might hate it. I, in fact, I guarantee that some people will hate it. Some people will hate me putting out a video of me visiting temples and seeing the elephants and, and that sort of stuff. Well, can't please everybody, can you? Do you know what? It is so cold in the shade. What am I doing here other than to show you that we've had a bit of snow and that I'm a lunatic for being out here trying to play in it. Ta-ra!